Oh man, I'm excited. I bought the cheapest butt joint coating tool on Amazon, and I'm gonna demonstrate that next. All right, as you heard, I bought the cheapest butt joint coating tool. This is a butt joint. We just made it. And we're gonna coat this with this cheap tool and see if it works. Now, how much did this cost me? Well, it was about four or five dollars, I think. All right, it's time for the big reveal. Here it is. That's right, they call it the butt master. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but we're coating butt joints, so it is spelled B-U-T-T. But anyway, it's the Buttmaster 1000. We're going to see if we can coat a butt joint with this. Now seriously, as you know, this isn't really a butt joint tool. This is a paint shield. But we're going to see if you can use a crappy tool like this and still get a decent finish on a butt joint. Then we're going to compare it to my Pro Level Level 5 Skim Coating Blade, which I know works really good for butt joints. Now this one's a lot wider. I do have a narrower one of these, but so let's compare them right now. Okay, so for this demonstration, I'm going to be using my level five tools to put this on. But anyway, we're going to use these level five. So I'm going to break out the big 14 inch. And of course, this one's the Kilted Guy version. They don't make it yet, but maybe soon. So we're going to use plus three, USG plus three lightweight. Now what we're going to do is pre-spread it on here like I might do if I was using a skim coating blade. I just want to go roughly that wide and about the width of that blade, so not too far. So now, what I would normally do would be to feather these edges and then get the big blade out and we'll run the Buttmaster 1000 down it. All right, here we go. do that again with a little less outward pressure. I was purposely putting that outer pressure on it. And hey, you can see it basically sucks. Now let's see how good a real professional blade does. If you haven't seen these yet, I've got some other videos. They're really cool. They've got a flexible blade right here with a rigid back. And that gives you some flexibility when doing stuff like this. Okay, other than the fact that I hit it with my tool and I left a little void right there, that looks a lot better. What we could do is go over it one more time. Normally, I want to pull the, uh, as much mud off there as I can to where I leave the joint tape just showing through and a slight radius. We're going to check that here in a bit. So that looks really good. That's an easy fix. I could have even fixed that if I want. And there, it looks great. There's no lap marks. It's got a nice shape. And I would say that's a pretty good contour. So we're going to let that dry and see how it comes out. Okay, I've given this a couple hours to dry, put a fan on it, and it actually is looking pretty dang good for one coat. Now, thankfully, I didn't stick with the Buttmaster tool because that one's a piece of junk. It was a joke, honestly, as you probably know. So one of the ways you can tell if a joint has got a hump in it or not, if you've got experience and, and maybe you can just do it, you can feel it. And I can feel a slight hump and you're almost always going to have a hump in a butt joint if it was on a flat surface. Now, if you made it recessed, there's ways to do that. It might not, but we're going to assume you just hung it over the studs. You didn't shim anything. You didn't do any butt joint tricks. Okay, let's try. Hey, is it happening? It's happening. Is it it's happening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you got a flat surface. You put a piece of joint tape on like we did here. You put mud on it. 
you're just almost always going to have a little bit of a hump. So we have a little bit here now. One way to find out how much is again to feel it. The other way is to side light it. So what I did is I've got this light right over here on the side and it's a long light box and that light box is able to concentrate the light in a narrow beam basically. So I shined it down the side of this butt joint and as you can see in the picture here, it looks pretty good. You can barely see anything there. But in this case, I just need to scrape that off and then I'm going to go ahead and scrape it because sometime you'll get a little tiny bump or something. Now you could do that by sanding, like I say, but if you do that, if you sand it, you leave dust on here, which makes it harder to put the next coat on. What I did is I checked this with a straight edge and this is a, that 32 inch level five skim coating blade, but I think they also work great on butt joints. That's why we're doing this. So. You just stick it up here and push on both sides and see if it rocks. Well, it's not rocking at all because it's just got the tiniest hump in the middle, but it's actually a little bit high out here and here for whatever reason. All it needs is one more decent coat. So let's go ahead and do that. Then we're going to dry it and see how it comes out. And we're just going to do basically the same thing, but maybe a little wider. Usually when you're coating joints of any kind, butt joints, recessed, etc., corner bead, you want to extend each coat slightly. <laughs> now we'll do the same thing when you do this. I generally want to hold it kind of wide. You don't want to hold it too narrow. You don't have as much control. So get it out here and try and put pretty even pressure. Just like in coating anything, the more we stand it up, the more we take off. And the more we lay it down, the less we take off, but the more we're likely to leave an edge also. It also flattens it a little more when you stand it up because the blade doesn't flex as much when you stand it up as it does when you lean it over. It's just kind of hard to explain till you do it. So I'm leaning it over at roughly a 45 degree angle, putting really firm pressure on it because it's a wide blade. So I want to give you a top down view too. So here we go. Now, sometimes you want to go over it a couple times. I actually let this sit for three or four minutes while I was setting up a GoPro. So it probably thickened up a little. So let's do it again. And that thing quit on me. God, I'm having hell. All right, I made several passes on that one. That's partly from me walking off, hunting down GoPro stuff. I thought I set up better. I didn't have this clamped up here. I didn't, couldn't get it to work. Didn't have my SD card right. Anyway, it's got a few bubbles in it. We can fix that tomorrow. It's got one little void here. So we're gonna let it dry overnight. We'll okay, so hey, this is dry now, but I actually screwed this up last time, as you can see. I let it sit way too long. I was messing around, looking for things, trying to get my GoPro up above, trying to get it to work. Nothing was going right. This set up way too long, and so it got real draggy. So I'm just gonna do a skim coat, basically, with this blade to clean it up, let it dry, then we'll see what it looks like with that side lighting. So we're just gonna give it a light brush sanding, just to knock off mainly like these rough spots. Should be good enough to knock off the dust if you can, vacuum it, whatever. The dust is going to make it harder for everything to stick. Like I say, just medium thin coat here. I'll thin it down as I go. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. Okay, so now we'll pull a little out of the middle, take a little off the sides. All right, we'll go over this one more time here. <laughs> My easel wouldn't roll. Okay, there we have it. Just a pretty tight skim coat. 
we're going to let that dry, see what it looks like tomorrow. It's ready to go, uh, but we're going to check out how good did it come out using the pro grade tools. Now, whenever I'm doing a butt joint, I don't care how good you are, they need sanded. There's two reasons. One is uh, usually you use a blade like this and over here and you got a lap mark down the middle. The other reason is because there'll sometimes be little pinholes in here and I'll show you a close up of what those look like. And then the third reason is because this is a butt joint, we often have a hump. We want to flatten that hump out pretty much as much as we can. So a lot of times what we'll do is sand more down the middle than anything to try and kind of flatten that out so it doesn't have too much of this type of curve. We want a flatter curve. So we'll sand that middle part down just to the point where the joint tape starts showing through. If you sand to where it's truly showing through, you probably went too far. So be careful with that. So I'm gonna use this radius sander today. It's just a really easy one for novices to use, but it works great for pros too. A lot of times I still like my rectangular sander, but if you're gonna get one pole sander as a novice, this is a good choice right here. Most of the time this will get the job done. So we're just gonna sand lightly down, mostly down the middle. So I sanded the whole thing to knock down any pinholes, bubbles, remaining bumps, things like that. And then mostly right down the middle. I know that I checked this and it was already fairly flat. So if it is, you really don't have to just keep sanding. So I think that's pretty good. Now let me show you how good it came out because on camera, you really can't tell. I can tell by the feel when I do this and it's not rocking at all. Now, if you see from the top down, there should be very few gaps showing right here because this is almost flat. For a butt joint, this is really, really good. You'll usually have a little bit of a hump there. Now, let me show you one more way to look at it. Okay, let me clean off some of this dust. All the scratches will, will usually start showing when you do this. This is very harsh lighting. It's going to make most any work look a lot worse than it is so i know i'm in the dark here but what we're looking at is do we see a distinct sh a hump right here and another thing i often do is i feel it by hand with experience you can tell and then let's go over it a little bit with some finer sandpaper i don't have real fine right here so you can see up close the sand scratches still show, but that's not really what we're looking at. We're looking at the hump. So let's check that again on here. And it doesn't rock at all. Okay, so if you were trying to do like level five or something, you'd probably want to go to 220 grit, maybe even a little bit finer because sand scratches will show real easy in this. We're not trying to set that up for this. This would be good enough for a regular texture of any type. They just do show now the painting will cover a lot of that. So that's one reason we don't worry about the, the minor stuff. Now back on camera with this type of lighting, you can see the scratches all disappeared, but under the harsh lighting, they looked like this. And that shows that the side lighting really magnifies every defect. Now you can buy cheaper mud knives of all types. But if you stick with quality like this level five that I'm an affiliate for, uh, the one reason I like these is they are made really well. Well, hey, as always, I hope that helped you out. Here's some other videos and links to help you out. And if you like this kind of content, be sure and give me a thumbs up. It'll make YouTube show my videos a lot more. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Take care, everybody.